Hey folks, I'm Gene Dallasala, President of Audioholics, and we're back with... Hugo Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. Gene, this is the story and the show that never ends. It's the show that keeps on giving, and we're here again to give you some more info on Dolby Atmos. Yes, absolutely. So why don't we talk about this experiment that uh, we ran and we had others run as well. Okay, well Hugo, first of all, as you know, we did a video last week and uh, talking about Dolby Atmos and how it's coming to the home theater. And it's coming in two flavors basically. Is option number one is to ceiling mount the height channels, mm -hmm. firing them down towards the listening area. Mm -hmm. And option number two kind of caught us off guard because I never thought something like this would be proposed, but it's it's being proposed. Yes. And yes. their proposal is to basically take an existing front channel or rear channel and throw a speaker on top of it. Boom, like that. Yeah. Going up towards Cybertron. And uh you know, obviously we're embellishing a little bit and some people, you know, have a little sense of humor about it. But basically the crux of the matter is there are companies, Pioneer's the first, that are coming out with integrated speakers. Obviously more elegant than this, the driver itself is integrated into the cabinet mm -hmm. on a slight angle. Right. And it's a coaxial driver, not a, a woofer tweet or separate like that. And mm -hmm. that, that gives you a constant directivity, so it gives you a little bit better um, radiation pattern, mm -hmm. more consistent on every angle. But anyways, you know, I was looking at, at how this is becoming kind of a phenomenon. It's almost like the Beatles coming to yes. America, but on a much smaller scale, if you, will. <laughs> uh, on you, if you will. But people are already starting to do demos and they're liking it. And, and I, I was like, you know what? I don't have a Dolby Atmos processor yet, but let me run a couple of experiments. And you guys are welcome at home to try the experiment yourself. And Hugo, what I basically did was I took this exact speaker, mm -hmm. I put it in the rear of the room, and I hooked up this other channel here, just this speaker alone, and I bandwidth limited it to 200 hertz with the high pass filter on my bass management. Mm -hmm. And you probably want to know why did I bandwidth yeah, limit it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, in the Dolby Atmos spec, when you use a speaker like this that's firing up towards Cybertron, they will do the cutoff at 180 hertz. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do this cutoff is they're trying to reduce the omnidirectional perception of the speaker. Okay. Let's face it, speakers at lower frequencies are purely omnidirectional. Yes. So bandwidth limiting it does help. Mm -hmm. However, even a speaker with a four inch driver still has very omnidirectional properties up to about two or three kilohertz. Mm -hmm. So unless Dolby is doing some type of DSP processing where it's just doing the effects above, you know, two or three kilohertz and hitting the ceiling, it's very hard to kind of um, do pinpoint ceiling bouncing right. without it being also omnidirectional. Yes, of course. So I wanted to test this notion, notion and what I did was I put mono music on through the speaker at 200 hertz, put it towards the back of the room, fired it up and closed my eyes and listened and I could still tell exactly where the speaker was. So what I did was I moved it towards the front of the room, mm -hmm. further away from the listening area and still, you know, I could still tell that there was a speaker somewhere in the front of the room. It didn't sound like it was bouncing and hitting me at the listening area. And obviously it's not a perfect test because it's not, again, the Dolby DSP, yes, of course. but it is telltale, you know, it is interesting. I think it gives a preview if nothing else. It does, and if you run tones, you know, our ears are really bad at distinguishing localization of tones. If you run a three or four kilohertz tone, then you can't tell where it's coming from at all. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it'll be interesting to see how this really works. But while I was sitting there, I was like mulling over this and I'm like, as I said last time, I really don't think most people are gonna be able to put a bookshelf speaker at the back of the room right. or the side of the room. Mm -hmm. Really, most people are using um, on-wall speakers yeah. for surround channels. Absolutely. Well, if you take an on-wall speaker into this Atmos concept, um, the problem is most on-wall speakers are about a little bit above ear level, close to the ceiling. I'm thinking to myself, well, how can we improve upon this concept? Because in reality, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah. Try to build a better mousetrap. So as you can see in the link that we put in the video, we, I came up with what's called a steerable Atmos speaker. Mm -hmm. Steerable meaning the baffle itself can rotate and adjust. So if I could just kind of simulate here with my hand, if you put the speaker on the wall, you could adjust the angle, okay? So now you could hit it towards the ceiling more. Um, you could basically adjust the radiation angle. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to put it at the front of the room and use an on-wall height channel, you could fire it down by flipping the speaker over and then you could have it actually firing at the listening area. So I just think, you know, if we're going to adopt this new format where this Dolby Atmos speaker is coming into play and people like the sound, then having a steerable speaker would, in my opinion, be a good option. 
And the reality is we're trying to balance between directionality and ambience. Yeah. And what I'm seeing now is that people just putting these Atmos speakers firing straight up at the rear or the front of the, of the, of the uh, room. I really think they're getting more of the ambient effect than the directionality effect of right. what Atmos is trying to bring you that you would get with discrete ceilings, uh, ceiling mounted speakers. Yes, of course. So it may not be as accurate with this approach. It's definitely not as accurate. It's not what the, what the director intended. But if people prefer more of an ambient effect, well, let's give them another option. Let's give them a, uh, a wall mounted speaker that they could steer and adjust to their liking. That sounds pretty solid. I mean, if nothing else, by being able to change the angle, that probably mitigates some of the effects of you know high having probably higher vaulted ceilings and things like that. You know. Yeah, That's definitely, and not, and not only that, but by by getting the speaker a little bit away from the ear level, mm -hmm. which is what's being proposed now, it get, it reduces the uh, directionality at the at the low level of your ear. Mm -hmm. So it makes you know it gives you I'm sorry it gives you less ambience and it gives you the ability to give you more direct sound being projected from a different location. Mm -hmm. Well, we shall see what happens. Maybe somebody adopts your idea here. You know, I do challenge you guys to just run this little Atmos test that we did and share your experiences on our YouTube channel. Yeah, by all means, definitely feel free to go ahead and comment uh, below. We're dying to go ahead and see what uh, you guys come up with, what uh, your thoughts are and uh, everything else, you know. Yeah, and you know, let us know if you're going to do a ceiling mounted or a Atmos enabled speaker because we ran some polls on our forums and so far it's not looking too good for the Atmos kind of speaker. It's unanimous that people want ceiling mounted speakers on every poll we've run and even some of our competitor sites have run polls and everybody really wants the ceiling mounted. But again, it's not everybody can stick spe uh, speakers on their ceilings. So exactly. here's the third option, an adjustable, steerable Atmos speaker. Awesome. Well, Gene, I think with that said, I'm going to invite people to go ahead and visit audioholics.com where we have tons of articles. Um, we have actually some of the uh, most informative Atmos articles out there right now. In we my do, opinion. yeah. We've been trying to cover this as much as we can. Very little information's out right now, so we're making some assumptions and uh, don't yeah. crucify us for it. We are trying to give you the information as it comes. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like we just uh, work with whatever limited uh, data we have. You know, and we try right. to go ahead and uh, explain it. Hopefully, hey, hopefully we're wrong. Hopefully this thing is just a bomb. You put it out there and it's like, you know, I, I love to be proven wrong too, you know. It turns television into smell of vision <laughs> Exactly. So, <laughs> hey, you know, by all means. But anyways, check out audioholics.com. Don't forget to sign up to our newsletter that we send out at least once a week with tons of like the latest reviews and the latest myth busting articles. And in addition, you get the top AV gear guide as well, which Jim will go ahead and cover what that is. Thank you, Hugo. So basically with our AV gear guide, it's a printable, downloadable printable format where we give you the best picks, whether it's based on budget or it's based on performance or both. If you're looking for a Blu-ray player, a receiver, a pair of speakers, subwoofers, mm -hmm. it's all in there. And it's just, um, it's a very concise document that gives you a great reference as a starting point when you're shopping for new gear. Absolutely. Fully printable. You can take it with you to the store. At any rate, with that said, if you like the video, go ahead and click like on the button below. And also, feel free to share your comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know what other sort of videos you would like to see. And feel free to share this with your friends. Don't be selfish. Don't keep all this information to yourself, all right? At any rate, with that said, until next time, keep, keep listening. listening. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we'll have to B-roll that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Basically, what we do with our gear guide is we give you the best recommendations that we found, whether it's based on performance and value or both, whether it's a Blu-ray player, DVD player. Uh, <laughs> you killed it. <laughs> Take two. <laughs>